Hi everybody, uh, welcome to day 18 of the coronavirus lockdown here in the UK. Uh, another few days to go before the three weeks are up that they said we're going to be locked down, but I think they're going to extend it at least another three weeks, so I'm not sure if I can uh, keep this going for <laughs> another three weeks after this, but uh, I'm going to give it a go anyway. If you all stick with me, uh, I'll keep doing them. You keep commenting and, and watching them. I'll keep an eye on the viewing figures, which are pretty good. Uh, you keep watching them, I'll keep making them, okay. Uh, done some, look, through the last of the prepared clay uh, today, so I'm going to prepare some more tomorrow. Uh, I'll swing the camera around in a second and show you uh, what I've been doing today. And then um, we'll have a look at finishing the teapots off and opening the luster kiln. Uh, they came out okay. There's one here. Hopefully they'll be on Etsy soon. Um, this is the one with the birds, but they came out okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, these are today's pots. Um, thrown with a ridge, and then I use a tool to put a groove and a rough edge in them. You can see it better on that one. Hopefully, uh, it's going to catch the ash. I'm going to put some ash on here, and it will catch in these grooves and then dribble down. But that's today's throwing. Okay, we're going to uh, put the spout on this and handle on this lid now. I've um, turned the lid. It fits. Don't put that to one side. I've also drilled a hole in it for steam to come out to allow it to pour. If you don't put that hole in the lid, when you pour it, pour it, there's a back vacuum and it dribbles out. So it just allows the, the thing the the tea to pour. Uh, I'm just going to cut this off. Now it needs to be cut up at an angle. So I'll just roughly hold it up to see what uh, see what needs cutting off. See where I need to start cutting it. About there. And what I do is I use a wire. You can cut them with a knife, but I cut it with a wire because it's a little bit more even. Marked it there. Pull it to the end. And I just pull it off evenly like that. And you can see it's got a sharp edge there, so I just smooth it out. And then I dip it in some water. And what I'm conscious of here with the with the um, with the faceting, I want to have a facet where I've got a nice place to put the handle. So I'm going to use that as my handle point there. So the opposite side is where I'm going to put the the spout. As you can see, the spout is higher than the lid. I know it sounds obvious, but if that is down here somewhere, when you fill it up here, it's going to run out. So it's got to be up there. So that's where I'm going to put it. Where it's going to sit. Now I've dipped it in for two reasons. One is that it marks it a little bit. It'll stick there while I do it. And also it softens the edge up. So I'm just going to mark where the where it's going to go there. And that I'll leave that for four or five minutes now while I do this next bit and that'll soften up a little bit on the edge. So now it's a question of using a, you can use a drill. Or oh, this is a this is a a uh, hole cutting tool, it's a piece of tube cut in half with a point on it. So I pick the centre and put a hole and I try to get these as neat and organised as I can. You're not going to see it from the outside but you will see it from the inside. And the whole point of this, the secret behind a good pour, is that the, the combined area of these holes is greater than the area of that hole there, and therefore the volume will come through and it narrows the volume and it pours out. If this hole was, if this volume of the, the area of this hole here was 
greater than there it would dribble out so you've just got to make sure you've got plenty of holes in it nice run but they might get covered over so there's my holes also when once it's dry it's a good idea to wipe the burrs off the inside be conscious of that okay now score the edge People don't need to score the edge. They don't. They don't reckon you need to do this. But it's all belt and braces. Slip. I put a little bit of uh, vinegar in this slip. It helps it stick better. So we'll leave that for a bit. This is softened up now. You can see that's a lot softer now. It's just we don't need to score this now because it's soft it's just a question of offering it up I can't do this to the camera because I have to get it in line I'm looking at it from this way to get the point ready press it on and just wiggle it until it catches that's gonna stuck well now okay let me just Smooth it in. Not so I've not used a sponge or anything at the time here. The tendency to people wanted to use a sponge. I mean I will use one at the last minute, but there's no need to at this point. Clean this up once it's all finished with a sponge, but a dryish sponge, but that's fine now. So that's the spout, you can see it there. It's above that height. Now we just gotta do the handle. Okay, so handles. I'm just gonna uh, re-wet this handle now, try and do it so you can see, just to soften it up. Pull it a little bit more. Okay, that's the question of just looping it around. It needs to be a bit longer. Looping it round. And the important part is to get the inside of that. If you get the inside of this curve correct, the outside will follow. Don't worry about the outside. Just get this curve, this nice spring on here. And can get my hand in there comfortably so it's just then a question of pressing it on the bottom you can see it it's really weird working opposite angles here I'm just trying to do it for you just press it on wipe it across and then what I'll do is I will put a tiny little roll of clay in here just to make sure that it sticks and doesn't want to split away and then what I'll do is make sure it's, le it's in line and that's the handle okay so there you can see it big enough to hold Bounce up in the right place. Okay, done. Okay, uh, that's the three teapots finished. I've just finished them off now, and uh, this is what um, this is what it's gonna, they're going to look like when they're finished. It's going to have a chino glaze on them, and then dusted wood ash. And uh, I'll just give you a close up of that teapot. Okay, that's the teapot construction done. Uh, I'm just going to go and open the um, the enamel kiln now and see what we've got out of there. Okay. Okay, I'm just uh, filming this by hand because uh, it's easier to see and I can make sure you can see the gold on him. 
they're the dragon they're the uh, the birds they've all come out fine this one here's got the dragonflies on difficult to see in this light around here but uh, the dragonflies are on there they come out okay and I had a couple of spaces so I th these are some old pots that I had um, Temaco on I've just put a little tiny fleck a little sort of Nike tick on there not everybody's taste but somebody might like it so there we have it oh there's the um, there's the enamel it's come out okay quite like that something to work on there this is just a test piece I'll be doing some more of these. Oh. So that's it, we're just getting them unloaded now and then uh, crack on with making some more pots. Okay, that's what I've done today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Keep watching, keep safe. And here's the question, can anyone spot the Game of Thrones reference in today's uh, video? Okay, see you tomorrow.